We need to practice the things we believe. Uh, Dave presented a true picture, not only by, he, he presented it with his words. Could you see them ripping that roof up, opening it up to let that man down? Now well, some of you are safe. <laughs>
scriptures here in uh, 1 John chapter 3, it talks about we need to persuade our own hearts to what we know and what we believe. And so uh, my question to you is what do you believe? Do you believe God is real? Yeah. Do, you yes. believe, do you believe that he'll, he'll take your life and make, give it purpose and direction? Yes. And I hope yes. you say yes. yes. Uh, as you can see from the, the handout, we have a couple subjects that we want to cover. And uh, I have a little note up here, uh, track in 1942. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Uh, but I did have something, you know, when I'm putting together my message, uh, uh, Lois asked me, are you going to cover both areas this morning? I, I don't know. <laughs> Stay with me. Uh, if you're a visitor, come back next week. Yes, uh, I talk slow, I talk with a lot of words, and you're going to have to be discerning what I'm saying. And they go on with that scripture I quoted about I have not seen, ear has not heard, but, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has in store for them, but he has revealed them to us by his spirit. And the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. You all know where that's at, right? First Corinthians chapter 2. I knew you knew where it was at. All right. Are you having fun? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll get serious when we walk out of here. And when you walk out of here, don't look like a prune. <laughs> you know, look like you received something and you're excited. Uh, this was dropped into my heart. And so I'll share it with you. In Psalm 95, before we go, a call to worship and obedience. <coughs> oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. That's what we were doing. Amen? Amen. That first song really got us tapping, right? That was exciting. And I, I, I like songs like that. And I like the old hymns. And uh, some of that, a lot of that music, because it has a doctrine in it. And it has some good words that will give you strength. Let us, uh, let us shout joyfully to, to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and they tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, It is a people who go astray in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. I want to follow the ways of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm believing that's where you want to be too. Lord, show me your ways. Show me your ways, Lord. And let me hear your voice. And I'm telling you as a fact, a true fact, you can hear the voice of God. Usually we're so busy with so many other things, we don't sit still long enough to hear His voice. The first place you'll hear God's voice is from His Word, the Bible, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. My wife is at home praying, and uh, not for me necessarily, but for you and for herself. Uh, and uh, I said, Jan, you know, whenever you're there, you're really encouraging to me. And she says, I know. I know, Gary. I know. But I'm not going. Oh. Uh, we had a good time this morning. We spent about an hour in worship. And, uh, just some old hymns. Uh, life is so good. Praise God. All right. Uh, back over to the epistle of 1 John. The epistle of 1 John. And we're working.
moving on the idea that we can know that we know who we are in Christ. Amen? Amen. And that we must abide in Him and we must abide in His commands and in His Word. And His Word is truth and it will put us over in life. Amen. I am a very successful man. And I am thankful for the journey that God has placed me on and where I am today. I'm thankful that the doors were open here for me to come and share with you. And bring God's word and bring another side of what you've been listening to or what you've heard and know and tell you that God is faithful. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's in your corner. If you're in Christ, you're an overcomer. We're going to read that in a little bit. You have the victory. You're not a victim. You have the victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Remember, the more you say amen, it draws it out of me. You say nothing. I might not say anything. All right. All right. And so John starts out his letter, and I want to back up to verse 24 in chapter uh, chapter 3 of 1 John. And it says, Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and, and he in him. And by this we know, circle that, if it's a church Bible, don't do that, <laughs> that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. So when you become a Christian, you're born again, According to John chapter 3, it says that His Spirit joins with your spirit and you're born again from above. It's supernatural. It's hard to explain. You know, I said to Jan this morning, you know, listening to some of the old songs, and He touched me, He touched me, and uh, some of the other music that, when I first hold, heard those type of, that type of music, my heart exploded. I can't even explain it to you. There's times it's just like a wave that sweeps over our lives and we just rejoice together. And though she had a squeaky voice this morning, she was right there. And I was there in tears and, and uh, just thanking the Lord how, love, how His love was extended to my life and her life. And we became one in Him. Uh, it's so exciting when you open this book. Now, to me, I hope it's to you also, as you read these words, they come off the page and they touch your heart. The spirit that he has given us. You know, you stand on that word. Lord, fill me. Fill me, Lord, with your presence. And then it goes on to, to give us some warnings and some insights to part of our, John says, listen, beloved. Uh, that's a form of endearment. I love you. You are you're my family. You're, you're my children. And he has given his life. John has given his life for those that are listening to his, his words here. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, there's a time to have discernment. And that's a gift of God to you to discern that, that which you will either hear the voice of God or the voice of the evil one trying to deceive you and pull you off. Paul wrote about that over in Corinthians when he said, I hope that the devil hasn't uh, deluded the, the truths that you have heard and has taken you off into things that you should not be, in, be involved in. And so, as it says to us, it is written, our lessons for today and every day is to be awake, to be alive, to be seeing what's going on uh, in our lives and in the life of the church. And so we must understand these things as the hour is approaching. Jesus said, you do not know the day nor the hour I'm coming, but you be ready. And so here we find authority given both in the natural and the spiritual. Two grounds we need to be aware of. Would you agree? Yes. All right, I'm going to show you in the Word. And uh, it 
it's important for you to search the word out also. We are called to be neither ignorant nor unaware or extreme about the spiritual forces of evil. There, there are people that are uh, demon conscious. Everything's a demon. There's demons on doorknobs. There's demons over here. Well, John says, I got good news for you. You have the greater power in you. And so we need to understand that. And so if you deny the powers of darkness, you're denying the words of Christ and Paul and John and others who gave the warning that you need to be awake because we live in very troubling times. Uh, for example, and, uh, in Mark chapter 16, uh, Jesus talks to his disciples about the Great Commission, and we'll cover that a little bit later. But he talks about them being light to the world just before his departure. Uh, and also in uh, Luke chapter 10, you don't have to turn there. I'll just give you a brief overview of what's happening there. He sends out 70 to go out and lay hands on the sick, cast out devils uh, in his name. That same authority he gave those 70, he gives to all of us who are part of his family today. There will be times where people will say, will you pray for me? Well, if they ask you to pray, they must see there's something in you that acknowledges that there's a, a strength or a power in your life that you can extend to them. And uh, so don't be afraid to step out beyond that. And these were all written for our example for the church, as it says in First, uh, Second uh, Timothy uh, chapter 3, where it talks about all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for instruction and for reproof and for, for us to live a, a, a godly life. God needs vessels to flow through. you believe that? Yes. He needs vessels to flow through. Uh, you are called to be an ambassador for Christ after you become a Christian. It says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Old things have passed away. God's not looking at your past. He said, forget those things that are behind and go forward in my name. That new birth and the call to be a, 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 a person who carries grace and truth to the world. And our world needs grace and it needs truth. And, and in one of the verses it says, uh, he committed to us the word of reconciliation. That means we plead with people, and that's what I, I do sometimes. I, as I'm ministering to people, I know they've heard the word, but you see no action in their life. You see, you see doubt and unbelief that oh, it's always been like this. No, it's not always been like this. We're living in an hour where God's saying, this is your moment, this is your hour, rise up and be my voice and speak the words of reconciliation that you can come to Christ and Christ will set you free. Do you believe that? Yes. I hope you do. Now, then we are ambassadors pleading as though he was, the Lord was pleading through us to be vessels that he can flow through. Now, in Ephesians chapter, oh, let's, let's move on here to number two now, of uh, uh, 1 John. By this you know the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, I remember teaching on this before. I could put words in your mouth. Do you believe God? Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Oh, yeah, I believe Jesus. Uh, do you believe God, Jesus is God? Well, how do you, I don't understand. Well, he's three, he's three in one. He's the Father, he's the Son, and he's the Holy Spirit. That, that's, that really messes with our minds. We find it hard to truly comprehend uh, that, how that is presented, but believe it, that God is one. They're all in agreement. The plan of God is being revealed to all mankind. 
And I find it interesting over in Philippians, if you, if you have your Bible, you can turn quickly there. It says, uh, Philipp, uh, not Philippians, 1 Thessalonians. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus came as the body form of God, right? Amen? And uh, he was certainly led by the Spirit. And when he left, he said, it's expedient that I go, for my Father will send the Spirit, and he will be with you, and he will be in you. And he will show you things to come, and he will teach you, he will speak to you uh, of those things that I am telling you. And so, when you start putting these things all together, and they're weaved together, all of a sudden you get a picture of godly presence in your life. You need manna from heaven every day, not just on Sunday. You have to have the truth always working in you. Verse 3 of 4 of uh, First Epistle of John. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because... Now, this is a scripture you have to put to memory. And the way that you put it to memory is you read it once a day for a week, Take a break and then read it again. And it will stay with you. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Do you believe that? Yeah. Now, I may stumble, but he will never stumble. Amen? You and I are overcomers in Christ. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, it's taken a long time. Uh, you know, when people don't want to hear what you have to say, don't take offense or don't feel they're rejecting you. Jesus said, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. Because when you speak of the things of God, people are convicted if they're not in God. Because you're bringing light into their life. And I'm glad that I'm a, a messenger, a messenger of light to whoever I can share my faith with. I remember uh, the first few uh, days of being in, in the Lord and being in the church with the pastor and say, does anyone have a testimony? Well, I would shoot my hand, I have a testimony. Yeah. What do you have to say, Gary? Jesus came into my heart. Yes. Anything else? Yes, he loves me. And uh, I want to tell others about Jesus. No one had to tell me when Christ came into my heart, that I was to share the gospel but the Spirit. After I made a commitment, I left my home, I went home, Janice and I rejoiced, and I said, I have to go out and I have to tell my parents that Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord. You know, when I did that, I didn't know this, but demons tremble. If you sit silent and you say nothing, he doesn't worry about you. Well, when you begin to speak up and you tell others about Jesus, I went to my folks. Uh, they owned a restaurant, and uh, at, at the at present time, we were having a little uh, scuffle in our lives about certain things, and I walked in there, and whenever I would get together with them, there would be some heated conversation. Do you understand? Have you ever had that, any of that with other kids? And uh, so everybody stood still, and I go up to my dad. My dad was... Uh, he was my stepfather. Uh, I, I never wanted to, I never said anything back to him. If he told me to do something, if 
he said jump. He didn't do this. Do this. I would jump. I never asked how high. Uh, and so I walk up to my dad and I said, Dad, I want to tell you I got Jesus in my heart. And he looked at me and he said, what? I said, I got Jesus in my heart. I, Jesus saved me. And uh, my mother was standing there and all the waitresses, you could hear a pin drop. And I said, I just want, I want to tell you I love you, Dad. I love you. I thank you for all that you've done for me. I want to tell you about Jesus. And he just kind of shook his head and he said, yeah, I know, Gary, I know. And he left. I didn't find out until 40 years later what had happened in my dad's life. Sometimes people make God look bad. Or they talk down God. And they have hurts or they offended uh, others and they said they were Christians. If you're a Christian, you need to stand up and live the best life you can of excellence. And if you step on someone's toes, go back there and tell them, forgive me, I didn't mean to do that. You know, we have to be people of excellence. Would you agree with that? Yes. And uh, so I went there, and then I went to my sister and my brother-in-law, and uh, I said, Mitch, that was my oldest sister. She was one year older than me. I always remind her, reminded her of that. She was 82, and I'm only 81. And uh, <laughs> I accepted Jesus in my heart. And I, I want you to know that, you know, it's really good. I'm sure I said a whole lot more. And when I got all done, they said, you needed Jesus in your heart. <laughs> well, that, I wasn't quite saved fully at that moment. I said, and so do you. <laughs> and I, I went around knocking on doors, telling people, people that I knew, people that I didn't even know. I knocked on a few church doors and I wanted them to know I'm, I'm a Christian now and I'm going to go to church. What denomination did you get saved in? Who cares? Jesus in my heart. I didn't understand any of that. All I know, I had to tell others about Jesus. And then I go to this church uh, and this pastor said, uh, when I was young, I used to get a bullhorn and I'd go down on the streets and I would tell people to repent and turn to Jesus. And I thought to myself, I can do that. <laughs> so I got me a bullhorn. And I stood on the corners and I was yelling out, Repent! The hour is near! And I took my whole family with me. Oh, were they blessed. <laughs> That's and I heard something and it spoke to my heart. I reacted and I did what I thought that I could do to be a testimony. And I worked for UPS at the time and uh, I just couldn't stop talking about Jesus. We would get together at lunch hour, some of the drivers, and I'd say, I accepted Jesus. And there was a number of black brothers there and they pulled me off to the side. You've got to quit talking like this. You know, we know what persecution is. You keep talking, they're going to persecute you. I know, but I just can't stop talking about Jesus. Jesus is the love of my life. And he should be the love of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. You talk about Jesus, you're going to get stronger in the Lord. You know, don't be a secret agent. Don't be a closet Christian. Be a Christian that comes. I, I don't mean run up in front of people. I've, I've grown up since then. I've got some wisdom, and I don't run and jump in their face and tell them, you know, uh, you got to get saved or you're going to hell. Listen, they already know they're going to hell. They know they're not right with God. They just want to know how to get there. And it's as simple as a mustard seed. Just confess Jesus as Savior and Lord and ask Him to come into your heart and change your life. The music said it all this morning. Dave said it all. And I hope that I'm adding to some of the things that you're hearing. Because I know that the word of God will not return void. They are seeds. My words are seeds being planted in your heart. And it will transform your life if you will receive it and say, Father, I don't understand. This is what I did. I said, Father, I don't understand it. But whatever you want me to do, wherever you send me, I will go. And he said, Gary, he spoke to me in this man. Well, he doesn't speak to me. Yes, he does. You're just not listening. 
I said, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, I'll take care of you. I will bless you. You just follow my ways. Now, I didn't say it all like that. I just knew it inside of me. I knew that he would be with me. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And don't you ever walk away from me. Amen? Amen. 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 So God is faithful. And he's, he will show us his ways. Now, Jesus said, uh, there, there are spiritual forces at work in our lives or around us. And he said, the kingdom of God is at hand. And we are to take it by force. So, we're just not going to take the kingdom of God. We're just sitting here and not sharing it with others. You want to be strong in your faith? Yes. Okay, there's one person. Yes. Yes, amen. Yes. Look, when you have opportunity, share Jesus. Guess what? You'll never believe this. I heard this crazy preacher the end, this past Sunday. And he was talking about how God touched his life. And he went out and told his sister, his father, his mother, all about the, the love of God. Wow. You talk like that, I'll tell you, the seas will part. They're either going to come to you or they're going to get away from you. And Jesus said, that's all right. He said, if they won't listen, just brush, brush the dust off your feet and go to the next one. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I haven't stopped preaching since I got saved. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Amen. I have more certificates, more <laughs> acknowledgement that now you can go. No, I didn't need any of that. I just go. Isn't that what Jesus said? And we're going to close with that. And if you want to read ahead, uh, you want to look at Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verse 10 through the end of that, and we'll pick up on that next week. And where was I going this week? Okay, let's see. Have an idea. I had a thought there, you know. There was, went right by. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Did any of you hear anything? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying something. Huh? Yeah. What? I said, God only knows. God only knows. This past week, I got to I, and to God be the glory. I had nine individuals at Walmart. Someone said, I can't find anybody to share with. Well, how are you walking through some of the stores? Now, if you go through Walmart, walk with a smile on your face. I come down an aisle, and here's a guy standing there complaining about, wow, things are sure tough. Wow. You know, things, what are we going to do? I said, what do you mean? Look around. Look at all this food we have. Are you, are, do you need food? He said, well, no. I said, are you thankful for what we have here now? What do you, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Take heed for today. Be thankful what you have today. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I said, be thankful. I, you go there to buy dressing for your salads, you have at least 20 or 25 different types of salads. And Walmart only has a few. They get the ones that move. If you want to see other salad dressings, go over to a, a Super One for you people that have a lot of money. I shop at Walmart. And, and so I changed this guy's attitude about where he was at. Things are, I've been in the military. I was in the, the, the beginning of Vietnam. And let me tell you, and I've been in other countries where people were living in cardboard shacks. And I want to tell you, we got it made. Now, I'm not saying things can't change. But the Bible said, give thanks to the Lord always. And again, I say, give thanks. Thank the Lord for where you're at. Thank Him for your strength, your health, your, your understanding that you can hear the voice of God. Can you hear His voice? Yes. Yes, yes you can. And can you sing unto the Lord? Yes, you should. The first time I ever prayed, we were going to this church for them. I, I told Jan, Jan, I said, remember how I always just sit at the back of the church? Because I was fearful that they were going to call on me to pray. 
with the church we used to go to when, by our home. And I said, Janice, I want you to know, I'm going to church with you, but if they ever call on me to pray, I'm out of here. And I'm going to embarrass you and that preacher. I didn't know they never called on people unless they knew they knew how to pray. But I wanted her to tell the preacher, don't call on my husband. And so I used to sit in the back all the time because I wanted to get out of there before people started talking to me. I couldn't talk in front of people. And so we go, I get saved. Jesus comes into my heart and I, uh, Janice, I was on the, uh, the next day I worked for UPS, so I had Saturday off, sent me down into uh, McHenry, Illinois, and she said, uh, get a card, and here's a guy standing on the street corner singing about Jesus. And I'm looking at this guy, and he's just singing. And I said, this guy has got the same thing I have. No one in their right mind would be doing that unless they have Jesus in their heart. I went over there, and he told me, some of you have heard the story, and uh, he said, uh, when, he, when he wasn't playing his guitar, he stuttered really bad. And he said, you need to come to my church. And uh, I said, well, why do I have to come to your church? He said, God is moving. I said, you say, what? God's moving? Where is this church? Well, it wasn't far from our home. So, of course, I ran home. I told Janice uh, about this fellow standing on the street corner singing about Jesus. He got that from the pastor. Take your guitar and go downtown and sing on the street corners. And, uh, and she said, what kind of church is it? I said, I don't know. I, to this day, I still have the card with me right here. They pray for the sick. They cast out devils. Ooh, any devils in the house? <laughs> and uh, they do this and that. And Janice said, no, I'm not going there. She was an evangelical free believer. And she says, uh, they roll on the floor. I said, no, he, they, he never said anything about rolling on the floor. <laughs> and he said, well, I, I, I'm just not going. And besides that, we have children, and I'm not taking my children there. And I said, well, I'm going. You know, here she's been dragging me for the last three years to go to church, and now I say, I'm going to church, and I'm going to this church. I get there, and I'm walking down the aisle. I'm walking in the church, and these people are raising their hands. This, this instructions. Raising your hands, it said the Bible. Worshiping and praising God and getting all excited. And I'm, I went from the back of the church all the way up to the front. The second pew. That was going to be my pew. And dare not sit in that pew. And so the preacher preached his sermon and he said, we have a service tonight. Two services in one day i got to get home and tell Jan all about this. And so we went that night and uh, we experienced a mighty move of God. In fact, there was a guy there one time that says he was the devil. He stood up. He looked like the devil. But the devil got saved that night. <laughs> they had an altar call and he went forward for salvation. And so I, we were sitting up there for a number of months. I don't know how long I'm condensing this. And uh, I say to the Lord, if you can ever use me, be careful when you say this, if you can ever use me, Lord, I I'm ready. Mr. Grable, <laughs> yes, would you stand and pray? Man, I shot straight up. I don't know what came out of me, but I prayed as best I could, and I fell down. On my seat, and I looked at Jan, and I said, Jan, how was it? And she said, who were you praying to, God or man? <laughs> Amen? Amen? We pray to God. Yes. Get ourselves out of the way, and let God lift us up, and let, us, let Him be exalted above all else. Let Jesus be our source, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, I tell you, it's exciting. Jump in. I, I, I have a word for many of you. Today is an appointed time. God wants to do something new in your life. But you must open the door. You say, Lord, touch me. He said, if I touched you anymore, you wouldn't be able to contain it. He's already touched you. 
He's given, He's breathed life into you. If you have His Spirit and you know you're a child of God, you are an overcomer in Him. There is no greater power you can have in you but Jesus Christ and Him alone. Amen? Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And as we close here this morning, uh, the singers will come up, please. Maybe God's speaking to you. He's saying something, you know, you've been running from me. But today I'm calling you back. My grace is being extended. And if you will repent and turn to me this day, he says, I will send times of refreshing to your life. And you will taste of the goodness that I have for you. And your life will be transformed beyond understanding. I will bless you when you're going out and when you're coming in. As you acknowledge me, I will acknowledge you. I will give you my grace, and you will sense the, my presence as you follow my ways each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you receive that, it's for you today. Here's our closing thoughts and prayers for this morning. Now to him who is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think, According to his power that works in us. According to his power that works in us. To him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, to every generation, forever and ever. Amen.